hi my beautiful people and welcome back to my channel so long time no see but anyways what i started out with was spraying the fingers with alcohol this just you know adds a little moisture to the cuticle so it doesn't feel like i'm killing her um all right it doesn't hurt while I'm pushing back her cuticles. It literally just softens up the skin. I don't like to use cuticle softener because if you don't wipe all of the cuticle softener off, um, it can cause lifting. So I would just prefer to use alcohol because it kind of loosens up the cuticle area. And it also acts as a dehydrator. So it's like a double whammy. So literally when you're doing this, all you're doing is just pushing back all the dead skin that is on top of the nail plate. Um, you can add a little force to this. You don't have to, you know, be like too light. Like some people's fingers, some people's fingers, it can easily be pushed back. And some people's, you kind of have to push with some force. It really just varies. Um, so yeah. So now I'm going in with my sanding band and this is a very fine sanding band. I actually recently bought, purchased these and I love them so much. And what I'm doing is I am pretty much removing the shine from the nails, the nail plate. Um, yeah, I'm going around the cuticle area as well as I even zoomed in for you guys. Also what I'm doing is I'm taking any excess dead skin as well. But for the most part, I'm taking removing the shine from the nail. I just recently purchased these sanding bands and I really love them. I purchased them from my local nail supply store and they're really nice. Like these ones, I don't have to like dull them out or anything. They're pretty dull already because they're a fine sanding band. So I would definitely recommend them. I don't know the brand because again, I got them from my local nail supply stores. So, but if you see something like that, then, you know, pick them up because I like them. So right now what I'm doing is, oh, I, which you may have seen, I kind of doled out her fingernail. So sometimes if I don't feel like taking a nail file and like hand filing her nails, I'll just take my, um, my, my e-file. Right now I'm taking my Panna cuticle bit and I'm going around the cuticle area this cuticle bit you want to be really really careful with you want to constantly keep this bit moving because if you keep it in one space y'all you're going to cause a hole in somebody's nail and you don't want that literally I'm just removing the dead skin um, sometimes depending on how bad the person's cuticle is I may go underneath the skin a little bit to get like really, really clean. Um, but that's only if their skin's like a little loose. So it really just depends. But literally all I'm doing is removing the dead skin from the nail plate. And if you don't know, removing the, the dead skin helps for bent lifting. My prep, I like to take a little longer with it because I just like to take extra precaution. Also, now what I'm doing is I'm taking my Ijo Beauty cuticle bit and I'm pretty much just removing like any flyaways from the skin that could possibly cause lifting. Um, I'll zoom in in a second for you guys to see like what I'm really doing. Um, but pretty much anything that's white, you're able to remove. What you don't want to remove and what a lot of people are now removing nowadays is live skin called the epinicium. Um... Removing the epinicium can cause infection and I've been seeing a lot of people do this and you really shouldn't because it opens the nail bed up for infections and we don't want that. So as you can see, I'm just removing anything that's white. Again, I'm not taking no scissors and cutting somebody's skin off. Please stop doing that. You're removing epinicium and it's live skin. There's no reason to remove that besides it just looking nice. So anyways, now I'm taking my tips from Amazon. I actually really like these tips. Um, the only thing about these tips is that it doesn't come in like a big pack. Um, but I really just wanted to try them out. But so far, I really like them. It makes filing time like slim to none. I really, really like these tips. Like really, really like these tips. The only thing about them, if a person has like extremely flat nails, these tips are not the best for them. Um... So yeah, that's the only thing, but 
her nails have like a natural i swear she has like the best nail beds i love her nail beds her toes i do i do pedicures by the way um so when i do her pedicures i just i just get jealous over her toes but anyways i'm tired so i'm kind of rambling but anyways what i'm doing is when you're applying tips you want to apply like a little bit of glue like just enough just enough to put the tip on not a lot because you don't want to flood the fingernail and not too little to where the tip is falling off so you really have to like eyeball it and figure out how much it is so she wanted the, the number cut off she didn't want the full nail um, but either way they're still really long and next thing what I'm going to do is take the scissors and cut the edges off and this is just gonna give me like a sharp nice shape um, I like doing this because it saves time on filing I like to save time and I hate doing anything that causes extra pain on my wrist and my hand so yes this is gonna save me a little bit of time with filing by the way these tips are really really thick so the thing I one thing I do but like about these tips is the fact that they are thick so with them being thick it helps with not having to apply too much acrylic and it ends up being bulky because long nails I feel like it's like kind of confusing like you don't want them to be thin to where they break but you also don't want them to be thick where they look weird like little claws <laughs> but anyways when I'm filing what I do is I start from the bottom and then I work my way to where I'm filing up and down and then I also like to blend my tips um, this just helps for if their if glue didn't get on certain part of the nail um, that you're kind of like filing that parts away so that it doesn't cause lifting the thing about doing nails they're literally the smallest thing can cause lifting so you just really have to take time and practice that's kind of what I'm doing right now is taking my time to perfect my process once I get my process down then my speed will start picking up um, and I'm also perfectionist so. <laughs> but anyways and also when you are filing you want to make sure that especially with longer nails you want to make sure that you're holding the side walls because it'll hurt and you don't want to hurt your clients so it may look like I'm going ham on her nails but literally I am blending the tip when you're blending the tip, you're not filing on their natural nail bed. You are filing on the tip, y'all. You're blending in the tip. <sighs> so when you are shaping and prepping for your full set, you are literally just prepping for your full set. Like, you want to make sure that you get your shape down before you apply any acrylic because this will save you time when it when you apply when the application is finished and it's time for you to file you want to save time so if i take a little bit longer to get the shape a little perfect before i apply acrylic i'm going to do that because it's going to save me time in the long run so now i'm just dusting off her nails to making sure that everything gets off and then i take a manicure brush to make sure every single piece of debris is off and then i follow in with swipe swipe is a dehydrator of the nail what a dehydrator does it removes all oil from the nail bed because as you saw when I was filing I was kind of touching her nails and stuff so now I'm following up with no lift primer I was using Valentino's primer in addition to the protein bond but I kind of wanted to try the no lift primer because I heard some people using this combo so yeah my two primers that I'm using is no lift primer in young nails protein bond so currently I'm using a size 18 brush. Um, I feel like it's so much easier to just use a bigger brush when you're doing longer nails. It saves you so much more time and it's not a very big hassle. One thing I'm doing differently that I don't typically do with longer nails because I didn't do like a single bead of acrylic, I'm just going straight in with powder this time because it's a cover powder. I felt comfortable with going in with just powder this time and yeah so what i'm doing is i'm just priming two nails that i'm going to be working on instead of priming all of the nails 
I started doing this why well, I decided to start doing this because typically when you are putting acrylic on during that process a person is touching your nails multiple times and you just want to make sure that there's no issues that oil is not being put back on the nail bed because oil causes lifting and longer nails takes a long time to do so yeah don't judge me y'all with my beads and applying them because it's the first time that I'm actually kind of working with a bigger brush not the first time I won't say that I don't typically work with a bigger brush I like bigger brushes so this is my first nail <laughs> for today so spare me please the hate but this set actually came out really really good so by the second nail I'm gonna kind of explain what I'm doing but one tip that I will definitely give when using a bigger brush is that you have to use your brush all right what I mean by this is don't just be using only a part of the brush use all parts of the brush learn how to maneuver learn how to finesse that brush because if you try to use your 18 size 18 size brush and up like a size 10 brush it's not gonna work baby <laughs> it's not gonna work like you really have to learn how to use both of the tips the belly of the brush the entire brush um because like i said if not you're gonna struggle with your bigger brush I honestly am kind of siding with lovely Mimi when she says that I kind of prefer using a bigger brush. I feel like it just gets the job, the job done so much quicker. So one thing that I always do when I'm applying acrylic is I always, always, always look at the finger from both sides. Um, like I move the finger and I look on both sides to make sure that there's no lumps and bumps and that everything is smooth. And it was kind of cold in my space today, so I feel like the acrylic actually no, I lied. The acrylic was setting really fast. Um, because I was using Young Nails Monomer with Valentino's cover powder. I don't know what pink this is, but it's so pretty. But it was setting really, really fast and it was kind of annoying. So as you see, I'm using the belly of the brush. My locks were getting in the way. My starter locks were getting in the way. I'm so sorry. I tried to cut some of it off, but anyways. But like I said, when I'm going near the cuticle area, I'm using the tip, the sides of the brush. You want to use the sides of the brush because you can really get in there. So let's go ahead and explain. So when I start with my bead, I start in the middle of the nail and I just work my way down to the tip. The, the free edge of the nail and this process you don't want to be heavy-handed because if you're heavy-handed then you're literally going to wipe all your product off and that that doesn't save you time that actually makes you applying product more lengthy so yeah so what I'm doing is now I'm applying my second bead it was a little watery <laughs> um, so yeah, so now I, I'm also cleaning the sidewalls of the nail. You want to make sure that when you're applying acrylic that you are keeping the acrylic inside of the nail. Please, y'all. It took me so long to figure out. I kept saying, why is my shaping not sharp? Why is my shaping not sharp? When you're doing nails, literally think everything is connected. Everything. Down to applying acrylic, down to prep everything everything is connected so if you're applying your acrylic and you're not keeping that product inside of the nail making sure you're cleaning the edges making sure that you're patting your nail and keeping it to the size of that person's finger fingernail child you're shaping once you once you learn that once you learn that girl once you learn that your shaping gonna be 10 times better so if you didn't see what I just did was I am taking the side like a little tiny side of the brush and I'm using it to really get in that cuticle area like you see I'm really getting in there and patting 
if you don't do this it's going to be so much harder for you to get in the cuticle area with your bigger brush i remember in the past what i would do when it was time for the cuticle area i would get a smaller brush to get around that cuticle area but that's so unnecessary so as you see right now i'm going in and i'm priming the two fingers that i'm about to be working on going in with the protein bond and the no lift primer and again why i'm doing this is so you know everything's everything's intact everything's snatched when it's time to apply that acrylic and there's no lifting but i'm just work trying out this primer so hopefully i like it So y'all, literally, I'm doing the same thing. Um, I'm getting sleepy. It's ten o'clock, <laughs> so I'm, I'm I feel like I'm jibber driving. Oh, if you do decide to use no lift primer, remember that it does have acid in it. So you just want to be careful because some people can be allergic to it. Um, if somebody does have an allergic reaction, stop the service. Stop the service. Get a cold compress. Have them wash their hands help them through it and explain to them like you know this primer does have acid in it you are just simply having an allergic reaction yeah so if you see that it's getting worse throughout the service then i would completely stop the service but it's not very comfortable you want to be super super careful careful with no lift primer because again it has acid in it and once it gets on your skin it stings i yeah i have had experiences with it my and when i was in nail school my teacher actually told us that she got a chemical burn from no lift primer but on nails it works amazing like i used to love this stuff when i used to use it back in the day so you just have to be really careful especially when you're applying it to your clients you want to make sure that you are not just being crazy with it that you're not putting it on their skin i see so many people when they're applying primer putting it on their client's skin as well and that's so not necessary like it's literally only supposed to be on your nail bed stop that so also a lot of my clients always say you didn't get any acrylic on the sidewalls i do this on purpose because it just doesn't make sense and the reason I don't put acrylic on the sidewalls is because I'm going to file it down. I file all that excess acrylic. You know, don't be leaving like a massive hole in the side. But if I hopefully I can show you in a second. So, dang. But anyways, so yeah, I don't put acrylic on the sidewalls because it helps me with shaping. There's no reason to put acrylic there because I'm going to file it away anyway. So again, I'm going in with my second bead. Be gentle. Be gentle. Just like a baby. You want to be gentle. <laughs> you want to be gentle with this process, y'all. Never let your brush get wet. I mean, mm, don't let your brush get dry. If you let your brush get dry when you're doing this process, it's just going to become a sticky mess. So literally what I'm doing is I'm just working the powder down. Like I told y'all, this powder was driving super fast today. Like by the time I started working it, it was like, all right, it's dry. All right, cool, cool, cool. So as I get closer to the cuticle area, I'm just lessening my product size. And I'm also starting to push that acrylic in to the cuticle area so it can just give a nice seamless look you don't start wiping product until you are you know ready to tar start taking away product don't start swiping acrylic as soon as you put the acrylic bead on like your first bead you pat first and then you start swiping y'all So you see that I'm adding a little bit of acrylic to the sidewall. That's because it was like a massive spot. It wasn't massive, but it was some acrylic missing. So the same thing going in with primer. Um, I'm going to speed this process 
this part up because I feel like this is kind of necessary. We just did this like five times. So I will be back in the next part, y'all. Alrighty, so now it's time to shape. So when you are shaping, like in the same thing when we were shaping our tips, you want to start from the bottom of the nail and like how I'm doing and then straighten your, your file. This is just getting all the excess tip off to really give you that nice snatched, that nice snatched tip, that nice snatched shape. And you also want to make sure that you are filing the free edge to also get up and down. And when you're filing up and down, make sure it's up and down. Um, when I'm filing, I like to hand file. I feel like a lot of people reach for the drill. I don't know. I feel like it just gives me a much smoother results quicker. But that's just me. And I always take my finger over the nail to make sure that it's nice and smooth. If it is not smooth and you have to go back and apply acrylic, don't be afraid to do so. It happens. Sometimes you may miss, spot, miss a spot. I always say in my head, I would rather do it while my client's there than have them text me and start complaining that, hey, there's a hole in my nail. Or, hey, there's a big bump in my nail. It's all right, girl. Especially when you're learning... I I even do it to this day. Sometimes I may miss a spot and I have to go back in. Don't be afraid to do it. I tell my clients all the time, I'm sorry, I'm a perfectionist. I'm not going to have you leave my chair looking crazy. I feel like my filing is pretty self-explanatory. Literally all I'm doing is just filing underneath the nail and straightening my brush. I mean straightening my file straight up and down to get the nice curve straight shape and when I'm filing the actual surface of the nail I'm going I'm going up and down up and down motions to make sure it's nice and smooth also practicing I always recommend people when they're starting to do nails to actually work on their application rather than designs and drawings um, you're gonna always need application. Designs can come later down the line. Work on your application. The application is key. Yes, designs and arts and stickers and rhinestones are important and it's cute and it's nice to have. All this stuff is great, but if your application is not down packed, no one's gonna wanna get your nails done because now you just have lumpy nails, but you have stickers on it like work on your application first i honestly wish that i would have taught told myself that like take time to work on your application to leah instead of like ooh, i'm gonna add rhinestones to it when you're adding rhinestones you're literally just hiding it like you're hiding your mistakes because if you didn't have those rhinestones you would literally have to make sure that the nail is smooth um and i'm only saying this because i used to do it like when i first started doing nails I would literally use rhinestones to cover up my mistakes and that really didn't teach me anything like yeah that's that's my TED talk that's that's all I have to say about that so yeah I'm doing the same thing I finally now I like to hand file I don't like to use my e-file for this Sometimes I think that I wasted money on my e-file because literally all I use it for is prepping the nail and for silk offs.
Probably the best tip that I would recommend, like I said, is taking your finger and making sure that you're going over the top of the nail to make sure everything is smooth. Your eyes can deceive you, y'all, especially when you're filing. You can literally feel everything. One tip I can also recommend is licking away, like looking at something else while you're doing this process of like feeling on top of the nail to see if there's any holes or bumps or lumps or anything because like you're focusing on one sense. So now what I'm doing is I'm turning her hand around to make sure everything is snatched and attached and looking real nice. So yeah, let's make sure that everything is nice and straight and sharp. Um, you want to make sure that you're doing this because you are now seeing what the client is seeing. What we see, it can be completely different from what they see. When they turn their hand around, they can see every little cricket thing. <laughs> they see everything that's out of place. So you want to make sure that you take the time to look at what your client is seeing. Okay, so now I'm seal sealing the cuticle area. This is just like making sure that there's no acrylic on the cuticle area or anything. And what you're doing is just taking your the bit of your choice. It can be a sanding band. It could be a cleaning up cuticle area bit that you choose. Like it can literally be any bit that gets in that cuticle area i prefer a sanding bit because it's a fine sanding bit it cleans up easy and it doesn't harm the skin or cause any cuts and it even it can even like smooth out acrylic if need be um she had like a little bit of acrylic on her fingers that was my fault because my brush was kind of dirty so i kind of kept getting on her fingers so i wanted to make sure that i clean it up for her if you do that just make sure that the 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 the, the um sanding bit bit is like extremely fine. Like don't do this with a rough sanding bin because it will hurt. So now I'm just taking some alcohol and making sure that everything is nice and smooth and getting off all debris. Y'all, I'm so sorry. I ran out of storage midway through a filming this. She wanted a throwback type style type of set i feel like this has done been done so many times so that's why i was okay with not really showing everything from this set but literally what i'm doing is i'm kind of freestyling the shapes um i she showed me a picture from instagram or pinterest that she wanted um i eyeballed it kind of got the gist of it i didn't do it like design by design I felt like that was kind of unnecessary um but I just used my eye gel beauty colors I wish there was a better I honestly wish that I had better better quality gel polishes because I'm not really a fan of the eye gel beauty ones I don't know they thick like thick like real thick so yeah what I'm doing is I'm literally just making squiggles and shapes with gel polish there's literally no right or wrong way. I'm going to shut up now and by the time I get to the next color, then I'll come back. And also when you're doing this, you want to make sure that you're not applying too much gel polish because if you do, it can cause like that little ripple effect and cause it to be bumpy. Um, so you just want to make sure that you actually take the time and don't be lazy, y'all. Go back in and do a second coat. Yes, it takes more time, but it looks so much better when you do two coats. And this would have probably been easier if I would have had like a nice like 
gel brush for this process gel paint brush um, but I don't so had to work with this fat old brush Alrighty, so now we're going in with this pink shade again. I'm so sorry y'all. I did not write down the shades that I used for her today I typically never do I always forget But really what I'm doing is I'm just kind of again freestyling And she let me pick this one she gave me three designs that she wanted and she let me pick out of the three and I chose this one Because I haven't done it and I have no regrets because I love it. <laughs>
All right, so now I am just like adding the finishing touches to kind of like the abstract feel. And now I'm adding a little black. This is when my camera cuts off. Um, I'm so sorry, but literally all I'm doing is taking a little Amazon brush and adding lines and polka dots to it that I got from my, my nail supply store, my little dotting tool. You're, this is just a freestyle guys so as you can see this is what I came up with and I really hope you guys enjoy this I'm so sorry so sorry don't forget to like comment and subscribe I'm sorry y'all for my storage issue please don't come for me but I really hope you guys like this video if you have any questions for me don't forget to like comment and subscribe until next time I'm back y'all love you guys bye